I am in Union, Kentucky at Big Bone Lick State Historic Site. Uh, this is considered the birthplace of American vertebrae paleontology. Uh, this is the site of a salt lick. You can see there are a bunch of mammoths, all sorts of prehistoric creatures. It's going to be really cool. Let's go check this out. Big Bone Lick is a crucial site of early American scientific observation, as after the Lewis and Clark expedition, President Thomas Jefferson had William Clark dig at the Big Bone Lick for fossils. Clark did a significant three-week excavation here in 1807 and discovered the fossils of some new prehistoric species. Meriwether Lewis also visited Big Bone Lick in 1803 while he was traveling down the Ohio River to begin the famed westward expedition. While here he also gathered some fossilized bones for Jefferson. Big Bone Lick is a national natural landmark. Here's a plaque commemorating Mary Draper Ingalls, a white woman who made a daring escape from her Shawnee captors here at Big Bone Lick in 1758. First we'll head into the Interpretive Center, which has some displays about the famed salt springs here. First off, 450 million years ago, this region was under the Ordovician Ocean. There were trilobites and crinoids, which were kind of like starfish. 10,000 years ago when the glaciers retreated from the Ohio River Valley, there were Ice Age era mammoths and mastodons who migrated here in search of the salt lick. So that's why so many fossils have been discovered here. They really like the salt. There's a mammoth tusk chunk and some mastodon vertebrae. This is Harlan's ground sloth. This species of ground sloth was discovered here by William Clark in 1807. After Clark uncovered a lower jawbone, the naturalist Richard Harlan eventually described it so it was named after him. This is an authentic tibia fossil of Harlan's ground sloth. There was another type of ground sloth here, which was discovered before Harlan's at Oregon Cave in West Virginia. That first one was named Jefferson's ground sloth. Here is a mastodon skull. They were all over the continent, but Big Bone Lick had one of the most significant deposits of their fossils, as over 250 mastodon skeletons have been collected here since it was first discovered by Europeans in 1729. Here's an excerpt from a letter by Benjamin Franklin who was also interested in the Big Bone Lick fossils. In this response to George Crockhan in 1768, he mentions how interesting it was that elephants lived in America while they were only known to live in hot regions in the 18th century. Here is the shoulder blade of a mastodon. The fossils of many extinct Pleistocene era species were first discovered here, like the stag moose, the ancient bison, and woodland muskox. Again, they were discovered by William Clark. That is the antler fragment from an ancient stag moose. Here are the cast jawbones of Harlan's ground sloth compared to Jefferson's ground sloth. 17,000 to 10,000 years ago, this was coniferous woodland, where caribou, moose, and even pine martens lived alongside mastodons in Kentucky. The climate warmed immensely during this time, and by the time many of the species went extinct, white-tailed deer came into the region, as they are still here today. Of course, for millennia there have been indigenous peoples living in the Ohio River Valley. The earliest Paleo-Indians would have used the salt springs and hunted mastodon here. Here are some artifacts from the mound builders of the woodland period. The introduction of maize agriculture in this region about a thousand years ago supported a vastly different lifestyle though. This is a salt pan rim shard that was made by the Fort Ancient Indians. Throughout the 19th century, there were several resorts built around here for guests to bathe and drink the sulfurous brine. Big Bone Lick is the birthplace of American vertebrate paleontology. This place has been a significant repository for natural history museums and private collections. The study of Big Bone Lick fossils contributed to the development of American science, and so men like Thomas Jefferson learned much about extinction and climate change, which were fairly new concepts at the time. This is a cast of the Mastodon jaw fragment that was collected by William Clark for Thomas Jefferson here at Big Bone Lick. 
The French paleontologist Georges Cuvier produced the hypothesis that mastodons and mammoths were extinct based on the fossils here. Here is an elephant tusk fragment, which thanks to Cuvier we now know to be from a mastodon. This is a replica of the first specimen collected at Big Bone Lick by a Frenchman in 1739. The real first mastodon tooth is now at the National Museum of Natural History in Paris. This is the ancient bison, which was discovered by William Clark. They were a good deal larger than today's bison. Paleontological and archaeological excavations continue here nearly 300 years after its discovery. The remains of many ancient bison were discovered here in 2008, so these are some of those fossils. That is a replica saber-toothed cat skull. Those guys were vicious. Here are some more bones and Native American relics found here at the Land of Big Bones. Back behind the interpretive center, there is a recreated marsh bog at the Salt Lick, featuring several prehistoric beasts. So let's check it out. These woolly mammoths are heading into the marsh to find some salt, though it looks to be a trap as there are lots of bones scattered around. For a long time it was believed that they would get stuck and die in the soft grounds here, a similar scenario to the La Brea Tar Pits in Los Angeles. However, that was probably not the case. There are some vultures chowing down on some bison intestines. Delicious. That ancient bison is either rolling around in the mud for fun, or dying a slow, miserable death. And here is one of Harlan's ground sloths. I will mention that Big Bone Lick is not far at all from the Answers in Genesis Creation Museum, which I did visit and have a video on. I do not think they would agree with the timeline or other evidence presented by the government here. Fittingly, there is a live herd of bison here at Big Bone Lick today, so let's go pay them a visit by walking down this trail. Oh look, there's a white-tailed deer! Here's a whole bunch of Plains Bison, direct descendants of the ancient bison that roamed here 10,000 years ago. Ancient bison were about 25% larger than these guys. So that was Big Bone Lick, a fascinating natural historic site with ties to Jefferson and Lewis and Clark. I would definitely recommend stopping by here. If you enjoyed the video then please like it, share it, and subscribe to my channel. Also take a look at my other videos featuring historic sites, museums, national and state parks, roadside attractions, and much more. Thanks for watching.